What does it take to be a successful entrepreneur? A dangerous amount of coffee and a ton of grit. My name is Jason Tracy, and every week I interview business leaders to share their stories, life lessons, failures, and advice with you. Welcome to Coffee and Grit. What is up? Oh, I'm so freaking pumped today. Like I've got my friend Clark Bradley in here. We've already, I'm like, Johnny, we got to get, we got to get filming because we're already going into the, uh, the meat of the conversation, <laughs> but super cool. I had Sam Gimble on last week for those that, uh, that are just getting caught up. Listen to that episode. If you have not listened to it yet, it's super incredible, but super cool. One of the clips I posted today was my first, first Facebook video that's crossed the 10,000 K view mark. So in one day it's, it's hit 10,000. It's still rising. Man, by the time you guys are hearing this, I'm hoping it's going to be one of those 100,000 100, view clips, but it's super, super cool. It's again, one of those things like the stories, it's the stories. But speaking of stories, I got to run into one of my friends, Brian Bastinelli at the gym the other day. And if, if that name sounds familiar, it's because Brian was on Coffee and Grit back in December. Uh, I think his episode was titled Making the World a Safer Place. And Brian is the founder of a, a company called Fortis Group. And this is so freaking cool. And just one of the reasons why I'm pumped up to see, because this is a community. Uh, we're, you know, this might be an overused phrase, but as entrepreneurs, we're in this together. We're all going through this struggle, through this dream. When I'm talking to Clark right now and talking about building a business, you know, it, it's like we're all going through those same things so we can really resonate. So, man, I saw Brian and this guy, he has a company where he's repurposing retired police officers and re retired military, giving them a purpose to serve and secure schools. And then I was talking to me the other day, he's like, man, this thing has exploded. So many people want security. He's like, it's exploding outside of schools. He's like, I'm, I'm protecting like high, high, uh, um, high, uh, um, priority people, like people that are, that just want security. I'm, I'm protecting companies. He's like, this thing has exploded. He was like, when I was on your, on your podcast back in December, I had 37 employees. He was like, I just hired my 140th employee. Less than a year, this guy's company wow. has grown a hundred employees. Like that is so cool. But what's so awesome is just seeing the smile on his face because he's, he has a passion and a purpose and to see it come full circle. He's like, I'm not making a ton of money right now, but he's like, this is like just seeing, he was like, you know, I hope I'm not sharing too much information. He's like, but it's freaking scary when you're, when your monthly payroll is more than what your, your monthly house note is, or your, uh, your, your house, your house is worth, you know, like he's like, it's pretty crazy when it gets to that volume, but man, Brian, I'm so, I'm so happy for you. And, uh, I hope that's inspiration for all of us dreamers and visionaries out there that, that, uh, that, that want to get to that same point. So without further ado, I've got my friend Clark Bradley in here and, uh, and I'm super excited to talk about this because I met Clark when he was opening up his collaborative, collaborative workspace, uh, co-work Brighton, downtown Brighton. And, uh, and we got to, uh, got to really build a cool relationship. And then one day he was talking to me and telling me like, I'm going to pivot and open up another business. And I'm like, huh, Christmas lighting, huh? That's, that's interesting. So it's so cool sitting and talking about what has happened and what's unfolded in, in really a year time. So Clark, man, welcome to the studio. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it, man. My pleasure. Go Lions, man. Yeah. I know, I know uh, start, you've man. been just as pumped as me. First in the NFL right now. First in Tied the NFL. for first. We're built for this shit, man. <laughs> We're built for this shit. I got my grit sticker on my truck, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. It's so beautiful. I get man. so many comments on that and pulling into places. They're like, dude, love that sticker. <laughs> I know. It's badass. How cool was it yesterday watching the game? It's like my son was at, at, his, at, his, at his girlfriend's house. He's like, do you hear the Go Lions yeah. chants in that? And it went nuts. I'm like, they're at, they're in, if, if you just turn the game on, you would think they were playing at Ford yeah. Field. So much blue. So much blue. Yeah. I know. I heard it. What was it? Probably middle of the second quarter. Chanting, let's go Lions. I'm like, this is like, this is the home game. You know, <laughs> it's amazing. When they got that punt and it rolled out at the, like the two yard line or whatever, that crowd went nuts. And I'm like, I can't believe that they're, you know, it's just, it's, it's really, really cool. But that is like, you know. Taylor Decker talking about, and we talk about grit, you know, mm -hmm. and, and the, what this podcast is about. And it, I think sports and entrepreneurship and sales and all that stuff, mm -hmm. it all so tied. That's why I loved getting into sales because mm -hmm. I looked at it like that sports, you know, it's like really yeah. competitive and they get the game. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, um, looking at that, like you see Taylor Decker and he's talking about like being on the team and having all the losses, like being through that, it makes it so much more like, rewarding it's so it's like a lot of times as entrepreneurs we're like or just people we're like the bad shit you know is we it can it can destroy us but that bad shit is actually the stuff that makes the good shit so much better yeah and it's it's interesting like there have been plenty of times where you know just through building this business it's like 
oh man, I have to do this. And Jimmy Plasky would say, I get to do this, right? He's got a, a wristband from a friend of his and it just says, I get to, or something like that. Yep. And it's flipping that perspective. Like I get the, I get the privilege of worrying about making payroll and making sure my guys are taken care of. Yep. Right. I'm, I'm responsible for three or four other people right now. And that's a heavy burden as a, as a owner, but what a privilege it is, right? What an opportunity for me to be in a position of where I know my strengths lie and then let those guys do the lighting or the power washing in the spring and summer. And, and so it's, it's pretty magical, uh, actually, just to kind of put it all together. Um, but coming from that position of gratitude, I know, again, we talked about that, that gap in the game. And uh, I'll bring it up again. It's just It was such a paradigm shift for me because I was always the one to – set a goal, and then hit it or not hit it and either feel the pressure of needing now to set a new bigger goal and go chase that and knock it down yeah. or miss the first goal and feel defeated and lose momentum, right? Like like I said, it's like I missed my goal for revenue for this first year, but comparing that to last year where I had zero revenue, <laughs> all of it is a gain, yeah. as, as the book would explain. Um, so it's always a win. Uh, so... What was your so? What was your goal coming in to the year? You know, starting a brand new business. I know yeah. you went through some a lot of coaching and, and people that have been in your industry, so you had maybe a good insight of what was possible. Yeah, yeah. I had I had a goal of 100k for my first year, uh, just for power washing, um, and I think we ended up at like 85. So it wasn't quite there, but still, um, some of the other goals that I had with getting a crew full time, allowing me to remove myself from the truck, so to speak, as they say in the home service industry, like get off the truck. It's a huge moment for the owner or whoever, you know, just to, to remove himself from the front line, so to speak, so you can work on the business. Or in my case, go to the estimates, be in front of customers, be the sales guy, at least for now. Mm -hmm. Right. And then also be able to steer the boat and look up instead of constantly looking down, doing the work. Right. Yep. So that was huge. Um, and I remember sitting with you at breakfast when you were telling me this idea. And that was like one of my first questions. So like, you're going to sell it and then you're going to go up and get on the roof. And you're like, maybe at first, but, mm -hmm. and it was like, I was, it's, it's really cool to see how quickly that came together where you did have a team. Yeah. And I, and I knew right from the beginning, it was actually kind of a blessing because I knew that I wasn't the type of person that's comfortable getting up there. 30 feet in the air yeah. on top of a roof with, you know. That was me. I'm like, I'm 20, not a heights guy at all. 20 degree weather with ice and snow. So I was like, I was forced to find people. Um, and a couple of those guys stayed on through washing this spring and summer. And then those couple of those same guys and then brought a couple more. And so it's snowballing. Um, but it forced me to think outside the box instead of me having to be that guy swinging the hammer, so to speak. Uh, finding guys that can do that better than I can. Uh, and then let me stay in my kind of lane, you know, after probably a month after I got off the truck washing this summer, I had to sub in and my one guy, I was like, so how did I do? Like I was a month out, you know, I was like, how did I do? Like we did a pretty good job, right? He's like, yeah, he's like, you should just stay doing the estimates. He's like, you're good at that. I'm like, damn, <laughs> I thought I was doing a good job. But he's like, nah. it's like undercover boss. He's yeah, like, no. exactly. <laughs> Before we get back at it, a quick shout out for our sponsor, Playbook Builder, powered by AI. This show has always been about giving the resources and the tools to small business owners in order to grow and scale your businesses successfully. And so I'm so excited to partner with a company that does just that. If you've listened and heard any of our guests, you've heard talking about building process, developing and training, building culture, all such important pieces in order to building a great company. Well, Playbook Builder, powered by AI, has come along and revolutionized the game on how you can do that for your team and people. Whether you're onboarding new people, training and developing, continued training and developing, you're looking to scale your business or eventually sell, or most importantly, you're looking to build a legacy as a visionary. Playbook Builder, powered by AI, is able to solve those problems for you. For me, as a consultant, I've been able to plug in, and it's so amazing for what I do for clients. I can now leave a legacy. And so, for example, I'm next week training a new hire for a company, and I've been able to build out the next month of her training program using Playbook Builder, powered by AI. The cool thing about the AI, what does that do? What's the hardest part of building out a process? 
taking this step by step and making it easy, it easy to learn. What AI, the AI piece does is you can actually type in what process it is, whether you want to onboard, if you want to onboard a new employee, type in onboard a new employee in what type of industry you're in, and the AI will put together a a foundation for you to build out your playbook. It is absolutely incredible, but don't take my word for it. Head on over to playbookbuilder.com and these guys have set it up to where you can take this for a test run with no obligations. Plug in what kind of playbook you want to build. If it's a sales training playbook, for example, plug that in in the description and in the description you can also put in what kind of industry you're in and then hit generate and it will generate a playbook for you. Impress from there and you can take a 30 day free trial of the playbook system altogether. How cool is that when when you when you can feel good about that team that they're oh. out doing an even better job than what you can yeah. do? Yeah, Amazing. and they're ready to call you out on it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and that's that from the get go. I was like, communication's got to be like I'd rather you say something not than not say anything. You know, I'd be more frustrated if you kept it. Um, and not all my hires were great. Like I had a couple guys that I had to let go, and and you know, for example, one guy that ended up letting go, and it was like this, you know, ten paragraphs of what could have gone better? And I'm like, we could have addressed all of this up front. Mm-hmm. And some of it was things that maybe were more so on his end that, that I wasn't caring for, but um, you know, I'd rather the communication be there um, just to just flush it out. Right. <laughs> communication has to be there both sides. I, I think I've told this story before, but the most embarrassing employee review I've ever been a part of, I had this, this manager that, they had this employee that was constantly having issues and when I'd have a conversation with this, with the, with the manager, I'd be like, make sure you have a conversation with them and then let me know how it goes. And it always update me. Okay. We had a conversation. It was good. Then they invited me to this, this employee's one year review it was like, you know, we have a lot of things to go over at a pre, you know, if you could be there, that'd be awesome. Awesome. I show up. He sits, we sit down and he goes over everything wrong that this, this person's did for the last year. And this is the first time this person has heard these story, this. Oh. And I'm sitting there like just mortified. Like wh- I thought all these conversations were had. I'm like, this is a, a me, you know, like, but how embarrassing this, this guy was like, if you would have told me I could have fixed this, yeah. you know, like it's just the conversation. Yeah. It's terrible. Yeah. Uh, that's, and that's one thing that I, I kind of knew right, from, right off the bat was like constantly asking, asking for feedback, asking my guys, what else do you need? Because, uh, and I told them right from the get-go, I'm like, this is a new company, right? I'm starting from scratch along with you. So I'm learning as well, yeah. right? We're on this bus. I'm just happened to be driving the bus, but like <laughs> you guys, I need your help. I need your feedback too, like trying to build this. And so that's kind of almost a selling feature to me, to these members of my team. Like you're on the ground level of something that I'm trying to build. I see the vision and I know where I want to take it five years from now, yeah. but they're going to have so much more influence on where it goes based on feedback, based on communication than a, a company where they're starting at the ground level. That's already got 50 employees or a hundred. Right. Yeah. And that's what it's, it's really cool for the right people to be on that ground level of a startup company. Mm-hmm. It, it, especially if you, if you look back in retrospect, cause you look at even your first year, mm-hmm. How's, how, how's that growth been in the first year? Well, I, even the conversations I had with this this most recent batch of, of three people that I brought on, I'm like, you know, I, I expect us to be busy, but I can't really tell you necessarily how many hours we're going to have, how many jobs we're going to have. So there's a bit of a risk and a bit of a gamble um, that you're taking to be a part of this, but know that, you know, I'm doing everything I can to keep the schedule filled to grow the, to grow the business. And by me not being on the truck, that allows me to do the estimates in person and do the follow-ups and all that stuff. Um, So it's different. It's, it's still, you know, there's still always like, I can't shut my brain off in terms of all the things that I need to do. Right. Like I'm laying up, you know, losing sleep because I'm racking my brain as to things that need to get done. So I don't think that'll ever change. Yeah. But I think the evolution is kind of, um, at first I think I worried about, you know, the, the other, companies that do what I do in town or nearby. Um, and I think I worried about just maybe that perception of being new and that kind of imposter syndrome, like, Oh, well, I don't really know what I'm doing, but like, I'm just going to pretend and figure it out. Mm -hmm. Um, and so you get a little bit more confidence, you get a little bit more swagger behind yourself. And, um, just if you fail, like it's just part of it. 
you know, I, I've been listening to Rich Dad Poor Dad again. You know, I listened to it, read it the first time probably 20 years ago now. Yeah. And I was like, I'll just read, listen to this one again on Audible, you know, just to kind of refresh. And a lot of the lessons are good. They're, they're a little more, I don't want to say basic, but it's like for me, I, I've known that stuff for so long, but it's still such a groundbreaking book. Yeah. And um, in, in one of the lessons, it's like failure more times than not precedes success. So if you're not going to take a risk or not going to do something because you don't want to fail, then you're right where you are. And that's what you're going to get. Yep. So there have been several businesses that either I started or Jen started. We started together. That didn't work out. And if we were like, mm, we tried it once. I'm going to go back to my nine to five and then just call it quits. Like that's failure. To me, that's right. Because you're, you're giving up at that yeah. point. You're not just learning from failure because I, I consider it learning not failing right? it's like you sharpen the saw and you get back at it um but there's that you know i forget exactly what it's called that emotional uh, maybe we talked about it before it's like an emotional wave of change or something like that maybe steve's talked about it before where it's like the uninformed optimism mm, yep informed optimism yep or something like that you know and yeah, it's like yeah 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 that wave is you know comparing it to what I was used to as just an employee. It is Steve has talked about it. Yeah. Yeah. And I shouldn't say just an employee, but comparing it to the, the, the peaks and valleys are so much more dramatic as a business owner, you know, um, trying to fill, trying to fill a gap, you know, for somebody, um, who had left and we have too many jobs and we don't have enough crew. It's like, or, or yeah. like I said, trying to fill payroll. Um, some of those, emotional roller coasters or a job that you thought you had and then they back out or whatever it might be, you know, a job that you pretty sure you closed, but then it's like, it doesn't end up and it's like, and that was a big one. You know what I mean? Yeah. Those are going to happen. Um, so trying to not have such a, a swing, you know, cause I can get pretty excited when, when you close a deal, right. Yeah. Yeah. Being in sales, like that's, that's your, that's your, uh, I don't know. That's like your, your lifeline. Yeah. Right? As a salesperson, that's how you prove your worth. And so not having such a um, wild swing in emotion is tough, though, as an entrepreneur, because it's just, it's baked in. It's so important as an entrepreneur or in sales to not get too high or too low mm -hmm. with the wins and losses. They're going to happen either way. And the thing is, is like, sometimes the losses, they're good losses to have. They, they may not be a good fit, good customer. Mm -hmm. Going back to your point of having to get rid of certain customers and clients because yeah. they took up all your time. Yeah. And I think for me, so this particular customer, um, it was one of my very first in-person estimates for Christmas lights. And this person was a very shrewd negotiator, knew what he was doing. Smart guy, nice guy. Yeah. Right. But, but definitely like worked me down to a number that I was kind yeah. of embarrassed to accept. Yeah. And it was like literally my second or third deal. I'm like, okay. We'll do this one. Well, after the fact, when we added in all the labor to put the lights up and do everything, I actually ended up losing money on that, that whole exchange. Um, and so ended up calling him and texting him this year, like, hey, not going to be able to renew it based on this. You know, I'll, I'll chalk it up to my inexperience of not knowing where I should have been. Yep. But I, if, if we want to redo it, it's going to be this, which ended up being like 3x what I asked of him yep. in the first year. So of course it didn't work out, but that's okay. Like it based on the amount of headache and demand and hassle, like, again, that's not one of my yeah. 200, 300 clients that I want to yep. serve. Spending all your time on that one, just yeah. negotiating the price. Yeah. I'd rather spend the time with the people that are o overjoyed with me just showing up ready to put their lights on their house. than the guys that nitpick over little things that, you know, we do great work, but sometimes there's little things that are sometimes out of your control um, rather than deal with someone like that. That's just kind of got a, a sour attitude. Yeah. You know, there's enough out there um, to be able to be picky on our end. And like I said, you're interviewing them as much as they're interviewing you. Yeah. Like I can already tell, you know, from that first phone call. Okay. Maybe I'm not coming out for that estimate because I can already tell this person might be. A real pain. So I remember I had, uh, K 
Kelly Hamlin on this uh, on on the show several months ago, and she's in, in the recruiting and interviewing process or inter, uh, business. But she was talking about like when you're interviewing an employee and uh, you're interviewing a person, and it doesn't feel comfortable. That it's never going to feel comfortable, <laughs> you know. Like, and it's, I think it's the same. It's just people in general. If that if it doesn't feel comfortable from that from that client standpoint, and mm-hmm. you know you're taking a price that you're like embarrassed about or it gives you the kind of that kick in the stomach and you know that you're more you it's it's you know at the end of the day you're gonna really run thin or end up losing money on it but i have okay to fire or say no yeah on um put an ad out on indeed and 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 finally committed to like okay i need to actually go through hiring like you're supposed to go through hiring like an actual process an actual funnel if you will just like sales and i had um probably a hundred applicants for this Christmas light installer. And I know I'm paying probably three or four more dollars an hour. Yeah. Compared to an equivalent work, you know, roofing work or that kind of labor, that kind of labor. Right. Um, and even though, even with that a hundred applicants, you know, and I kind of put some speed bumps in there deliberately just to see how is this person going to respond. Right. Fill out the application on Indeed, then go to my site, fill out my application, and then I'll email you, fill out this disk test, and email me your results. Mm-hmm. And it's amazing how hard it is for some uh, just to follow a few steps. And it's like you're, you're reading yourself out. And yep. That's okay. Because I want to nip this right now yep. up front. And then even those people that kind of got through that funnel, it's like on the phone with them, okay, on a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate yourself in, in terms of how work, hardworking you are? And give me maybe give me a couple examples. Uh, maybe a six. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, any examples you could think of? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. You sure? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Mm, I don't know. All right, moving on. Like, uh, it's, it's a amazing. little sign. Sometimes we need people so bad that we overlook those the the signs that are so obvious that mm-hmm. like afterwards we're like oh yeah it was right there staring in my face yeah. the whole entire time you know yeah and then my first three or four hires it was like okay my you know one of my guys had a friend that needed some work so i'm like all right cool bring him out yeah and it was like he shows up okay he puts lights up on the on the on the gutters and did a pretty good job cool i'll pay him and then you blow that out six months 12 months later and it's like oh all these problems that i didn't bother to uncover right yep are now that much bigger Absolutely. to deal with right well you talk about just that little thing of following the directions that's going to be an employee that you have to give directions and coaching to yeah and if it's so painful just to just to go through the application process yeah how is it going to be when it's something a little bit more complicated yeah well and i know so like i took the disc test along with these guys and a few girls that I had interviewed as well. And it's like, I know that I was a high I. Have you ever taken it? Oh, you yeah, know that? Yeah. yeah. So I'm a high I and then my second is D. D so yeah, yeah. conversational. Welcome to the club. More, yeah. <laughs> more, more, you know, like, I could have guessed that about yeah, you. Yeah. Yeah. And then, but the, but the two and the third guy are all S and C, higher S and C, mm. which is perfect because yep. I need people who can check off boxes, yep. attention to detail, DTL. follow a system. Yep. We show up at the house. It goes here. The cords go here. The plugs go here. The timer's here. Boom, 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 boom. Follow the checklist, check them off, next. Whereas for me, it's like, I know I need those systems around me because I'm not naturally organized or process oriented, right? I'd rather, I'm, I'm more people oriented. So I'm going to surround myself with the right kind of people who can keep me in check. You know, like my next hire is probably some kind of an admin to like keep guardrails up for me Yep. and keep me organized and on task and focused, right? Because I'll, I'll You're talk. you visionary. With, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like again, I, I, I have it in my head. I just need to like, get it going, yep. put, put everything in place. You know, um, Jen will always yell at me and I'm like, Oh, what if we did this? You know? And I'm always like <laughs> these, these pivots, right? I'm like, I'm talking about, you know, we're maybe we're doing window washing next year. We add that to our business. So we do maybe landscape lighting, which is a perfect extension to Christmas lights. Right. Yep. Especially for the, the type of clientele that we're, we're kind of targeting. Um, you know, cause it's not an inexpensive product or service that we offer. And so it's, it, we don't cater to everyone and that, that's okay. Yep. That's part of the model. Um, She's like, okay, let's just focus. Like, let's dial this in, get your crew, get maybe another truck, another crew, like get this to the point where it's kind of humming. And then let's talk about an offshoot or an, uh, you know, like an add on, so to speak. And so she's kind of my, she's kind of my guardrails (laughs) right now. She's your integrator essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So she's, yeah, she's probably 
more even split. Like I'm definitely more visionary, less integrator. She's yep. probably an even split because she's got a good mix of both. I was wondering, is she like a, is she, is she taking the disc? I have, I have to have her take it. Um, she's like a CD. She's definitely imagine. not an I. Or, yeah, she's going to have to be, she's not I or D, maybe a little bit D. So she probably is like a, if I had to guess, like a D S or something like that. But she's still got enough of that um, attention to detail to yeah. where it keeps me, you know, keeps me lined, lined up. So. That, that's yeah, awesome. fun. Yeah. That's greasy. She's the attention to detail and, yeah. and, and that kind of thing. Yeah. And I'm the visionary where it's like wandering yeah. around and yeah. got to be pulled back in. Yeah, for sure. Up <laughs> in the clouds. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's fun. It is fun, but we need those people to, to your point. That's awesome that you go through from this stage and, and you are finding out what your people are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it's important. Like, you know, and for, for the couple of guys that I have right now and the third guy I'll be bringing on, making sure that they can, they can work well together and can work as a team, you know, and I, I didn't want to have, I had a guy last year that was really good at uh, just getting up on the roofs and, and great at roofing. He was actually a, had a roofing company and helped me out through the, through the winter. Um, and one of my business coaches would call that he's got a, his own kind of quadrant for, for different types of employees. And he would call that guy a maverick, whereas high skill level, but very much independent thinker, he kind of showed up when he wanted to. Does it his own way. Did it his own way. Was an okay team player, but kind of took advantage of, of some things throughout the season. And so not somebody I'm bringing back. Even though he was excellent on the job, doing yep. his job, because he was always the one getting up on the 30, 40 foot peaks. Yep. Um, Still not the right person. Not for the right that. person. Yep. Because I need someone who's going to work well with three other people on the job. Yep. Yeah, skill level doesn't matter. When we're talking about team and that's again we talked about at the beginning how sports is so correlated to business mm-hmm. it's the same way and if you're showing up and and you've got you could be the best football player you could be the best quarterback like you can throw the ball really far and stuff like that but if you're if you're not blending well with your teammates it doesn't matter mm-hmm. if you're not working with the team it doesn't matter because your throw is going to miss the receiver every time mm-hmm. and like that relentless book we've talked about that tim grover like you know Michael or Kobe didn't pass the ball. I forget what player was it was on his team. Like yeah. Kobe just didn't pass it to him because yeah. he's like, you're not putting the work in. I'm going to shoot it because I'm probably going to make it. And you're just not because I'm outworking you three practices a day and all the crazy stuff that he did, you know, yep. years into years, it's complete dedication to the game. And it's like, you know, most people aren't to that level. I'm not to that level. I'll admit it. You know, like that cleaner level is just superhuman. Yeah. Right. Yep. Um, but to find people that can balance you out and compliment you and, and help lift you up. Right. So we've, we've talked about this before as well, as well, like the five people you surround yourself with. That's why for me, one of the big pieces I think to where I'm been able to get even just in this year is finding those coaches or mentors specific to my industry. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mentioned before we started, there's a guy out of Vancouver that I've signed on with that built his own power washing and Christmas light business. So I'm like, okay, this guy's done it. He's into the, well into the seven figures. I'm like, and he's very systems and process oriented. And I'm like, oh, it's so perfect because that's not what I am. So not only has he paved the way, he's done it in a way that I need to be better at. So that's been, that's been really impactful. Um, that's huge because that was one of the questions is like, okay, you, you get into this, you have, you've never done Christmas lighting before, right? Mm-hmm. If, um, did you, did you, you said you did landscaping, I think? I did. I had a landscaping business uh, for six years through high school and college. Uh-huh. So I had a, I had a general idea of home service and servicing, you know, clients for a need in their houses, if that makes sense. So I would say 70% of it is the same, right? The, the, the work itself obviously is different, but cutting grass or power washing or putting up lights, all the stuff that it takes to get to that point of actually fulfilling the work is the same. All right, showing up at the house, wearing the right stuff, passing out the materials, talking to the customer, asking the right questions, right? Yep. All that's the same. Yep. Whether it's, oh, your house looks dirty, or it's, oh, yeah, these lights would look beautiful up here. How old are your kids, right? All that stuff that translates. Um, and so, yeah, so I had I had that knowledge going in. Um, and then last summer, it was just kind of odd luck that, Jen sent me this podcast and was like, you look bored, you know, cause I told you like the co-working space had gotten to a point, like people come up 
they kind of know how it works, right? Like the yeah. people that are the regulars there, it's like they have access to the door, they go in, they get their coffee, they find their spot, they get to work, right? So for us, there's work in the beginning, getting things set up in the morning, and then there's cleanup at the end, you know, emptying garbage and stuff. Um, but during the day, there's a gap. So she's like, hey, you look a little bored. Check out this podcast just for fun. And I listen to it, and I'm like, okay, I'm in. And this guy just so happened to have like that next Friday, which was like a week and a half later, was having an in-person training in Indianapolis, like a three-day power washing Christmas lights training. Different than the guy now that I'm working with in Vancouver. But And I was like, all right, I'm going. And so just kind of took a leap of faith. and It all started with a podcast. It all started with a podcast. <laughs> it's really cool how that happened and how you just took immediate action. Yeah, I think... Um, Pretty much since I left the banking industry, and my wife's had been a big proponent of training as well. She built her business. Her, she had an online membership. I know we've talked to you about that. She built that um, and has since sold that business. But she was throughout, so probably since 2013, 14, has been a part of different coaching programs, really for the last decade. So we're both pretty bought in of like, okay, I'm going to find somebody who's five steps ahead of me, and I'm willing to pay them to shorten my my curve yeah, and speed up this whole process. Like would I pay a thousand, two thousand, ten thousand dollars, depending on the level of the program to save a year. And if I can make a hundred grand, 200 grand in that year, the five I spent or 10 I spent on the training is 100% justified. Absolutely. But it's hard because you got to put it up front, up front. and then it's on you to fulfill, right? Like the coach is going to be there, but they're not always, you know, expecting or the expectation is there, I guess, but you've got, you've got to bring it, you know? So it's, it, it holds your feet to the fire for sure. Like I know I'm part of this coaching program and I've got these calls throughout the week and I'm like, Oh, I got to get on this call. I got to get this guy to ask these questions for this particular thing, like hiring, right? Like had a lot of mentorship through the last three months on what's the right process for this. What are the questions I should be asking? Cause that's totally new for me, you know? And then, it helped out, you know, I was able to hire three rock stars and had I not had the mentorship to lean on, it wouldn't have guaranteed it wouldn't have gone as well. It's a, it's a huge, uh, um, to know where you, where you're going to, where you're going to be short and to again, speed that up, yeah. uh, making that realization that they can get you fat there faster. Yeah. And we've talked about the other, the other thing I really lean on for them is, when I have wins, but also when I have losses, right? When I have times where I'm feeling down, I go in there and I'm reading about these other guys who had these kind of pits or these, you know, low points. And then they push through and like, they're like, boom, boom, boom. Here's some successes that I just had. So it's like that rising tide lifts all boats methodology. And for me, it's like, I can share wins in that group, you know, on our, on our chat, on our forum, uh, and not be fear, fearful that I'm going to get like, judgment or oh why are you doing all that like you're working too hard or like whether it's you know friends of mine not not really so much but just people that I maybe aren't in the industry or don't quite understand the methodology of what it not what it takes but like the different thinking it takes as an entrepreneur and the roller coaster that it is mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. like you know my friends will ask and stuff and I'll talk about it but to to kind of peel back the onion with someone who's in the same industry, maybe you're not, you know, maybe they're across the country or not, but it translates. And so I can share a win and not feel. So I, I, I'm, I'm probably more um, passive or don't really like to boast. So it's like, for me, I don't want to, I don't want to brag, but mm -hmm. in that group, it's like, it's okay because that message could be uplifting, uplifting to somebody else who needs it at that time. Yep. You know, so you're surrounding yourself with, like-minded people in the same industry. So that that's huge for, for my, um, my growth so far. Yeah. Uh, I would, one of my big, pet, uh, big pet peeves is like that whole humble, like, you know, it's like, yeah, uh, it's not bragging, you know, it's being grateful. Mm -hmm. It's being grateful. And like, we talk about the gap in the game a lot. And, yeah. uh, and Dr. Rhonda, who was on uh, a couple months ago, talked, brought that book to my attention and I, I started reading it. We were reading it at the same time and thinking about like, I remember you said, you know, I had this goal for what that first year is going to look like. And, but then it was like looking at 
what really happened? And, uh, and you had said like, I got, you know, I kind of got lucky and got these employees. And I remember, I don't know if I, somebody else said this to you too, but I was like, well, is it really luck or did those, did you draw those people to yeah. you? Yeah. One, I do remember you did say that. And I think it's, I think it's a little of both. Um, the, it was, a, it was a, a, a referral from my wife's cousin and then his friend and they ended up working out for the, the majority of, of the first year of lighting last year and then all of the washing season this year. And, um, you know, I didn't go through, like I said, I didn't go through a formal hiring process with either of them, but just being around them enough, getting to know them, realizing that they can handle their own. Um, it worked. You know, looking back, I probably would have gone through a formal hiring process. And, you know, it's funny, my, my one guy, my one guy who who's an awesome kid, and he's probably 15 years younger than me so i think i'm old enough to call yeah, him a kid, call him a kid. yeah yeah um <laughs> he's like you know i uh i know i helped you out last year with lights he's like power washing is probably really more my jam and he's like i don't really like ladders and i don't like the cold <laughs> so i'm like yeah that, that probably makes sense and it's like thinking back now like had i actually gone through a formal process with him i'd be like hey we're gonna hold off on lights but i'll call you in the spring right but he's like i'll work he's like i like working with you i like working for you but i just don't like but the stuff, he's like, I can, I can like do some office stuff in the background. I'm like, we'll see, we'll figure something out. <laughs> so I don't know. Like, but that's cool that he can, he can be up front and tell you that yeah, too. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's, that was huge. Like I want him, the, the communication has always been, been you, critical. You, you talked about like winning and winning or learning anyways, but you know, like, mm-hmm. yeah, there's some things that you should do in the beginning. It's like the hindsight, right? Mm-hmm. You learn that, you document it, and you make it part of your process. It's mm-hmm. like, um, like sometimes it sucks to lose or have an employee that goes wrong, but then you kind of know what to look for the next time around. Yeah, yeah, and I, and I think one of the guys that I probably could have learned from and done a little differently, one of the guys that's not with me any longer. Like I was, I was of the of the, of the expectation that we'd have, you know, two trucks and a group of two two man crews by the middle of the spring, and we didn't grow quite as fast as I had expected. And I think he was relying on that bar being set because that's the expectation that I gave him. Mm-hmm, right. Mm-hmm. And so I was maybe a little over, uh, maybe too ambitious with it. And so the, the anticipation was there, but the, the communication maybe wasn't the clearest in terms of you might be in this role for X amount of time. We'll see how it grows. We'll see how you progress. And as we grow, when the time is right, when the revenue's there, when the jobs are there, I could see you being a truck leader, you know, running a crew. Um, so, yeah, I think I think for me it's having the systems in place because I know I, I'll have, you know, oh, I, I, I want it to look like this and I want it to grow to this and I think I can have this many pieces in place and, and, and have it, you know, we've got two crews or four crews and a bunch of trucks on the road and that gets people excited, but it's like, that could be three years from now in, so what do you, in reality, what do you, see that you know, what do you see your vision with this? Um, I mean, there's, there's guys that I've talked to that have, you know, $10 million companies, $20 million companies. I don't expect it to go quite to that level more. So for me, it's kind of like what I want my lifestyle to look like as opposed to a number. Yeah. Right. I mean, I know I needed to get to probably a three to $4 million company in terms of what I want it to look like, but it's more so, who do I have, right? Another same guy that wrote um, uh, Gap in the Gain. Dan Sullivan. Who, not how, mm-hmm. right? So who do I need to bring in in order for me to pick my kids up from school? My sons have a um, a Cub Scout thing tonight mm-hmm. at 6 o'clock yep. for me to be able to go to that. And, I, and I'm going to it, but to continue to do those things, right? So I mentioned an admin, right, to take off some of the stuff on my plate. Like I've got six estimates to do tonight that – that person could do during the day. Yep. Right. So changing the lens a little bit as to what I want the lifestyle to look like. And then who do I need to put in place in the right seat on the bus to make it happen? And then just can continue to put gas on the fire. So it's collectively between the two companies. Yeah. Probably two, three in that range. You figure 20, 30% net of that. And that's um, probably a comfortable amount. I mean, it's more than comfortable. So just with, with some of the ambition that, and some of the goals that both Jen and I have with it, and like I said, she's helping out quite a bit on the back end with website and social media stuff. So, yeah. 
so cool to like again like you know i talk about brian at the beginning in just watching kind of that growth and seeing it with with people that i'm connected with the community watching them again you know watching it from that seedling of this is what's this is what i'm doing mm-hmm. to seeing you put that structure in place to growing it for the next you know 10 years and what that will look like yeah it's cool it, it's a weird feeling like i do payroll on wednesdays right so in two days i have to run payroll and it's like okay <laughs> good amount of money that's going out of the account yeah. on those days but i also think of every time i do that it's a, it's a privilege for me to be able to do that for, for other people to have put that much trust into me to rely on my company to feed their families, pay their bills, cover their mortgage, all that stuff, right? It's an honor, honestly. And then I think of how much revenue is attached to those hours that those people worked. And then hopefully there's some left over for me as the owner. Um, so yeah, it's it's pretty cool. It's, it's a weird experience because this is new. I mean, this is all new for me too, yeah. right? Just kind of jumping in. Figuring out how the shoot opens on the way down, right? Um, well, and even thinking about like forecasting, right? Like you could set goals in that first year, but you're like, you can tell your people, hey, this is where it's going to go, but you're really throwing a hope, you know, and yeah. you may have a plan and stuff like that, but it's like, really, what's that market look like? That first year is really that task of now you have repeat customers and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. How is that forecasting? You know, does, is it a lot easier, I guess, to look at this is what this year will look like? Yeah, I mean, it helps, you know, so for, for Christmas lights, I think I already mentioned we've got, you know, 80 or 90% of people coming back, a few that I chose not to renew. Um, but that that's great. That's helpful to predict kind of where we'll be. And then the rest is just kind of gravy at that point. You know, we did 35 installations first year. My goal is 100. And again, if I don't hit that, even if we hit 50 or 60, it's like, hey, that's 25 more than last year. So to me, that's still a gain, Yep. even though it's not quite where I want it to be, right? Um, so yeah, it's just trying to stay, to keep that perspective, instead of thinking, oh man, I'm a failure because I didn't, I hit 60 installs instead of 100. Oh man, like I'm disappointed. Numbers aren't where I want them to be, but still growth from year one to year two and yep. brought on three new guys and have this many new customers and all of the other things that go with it. Absolutely. Yeah. A lot of uh, what I talk about just period, but on the show especially is like finding your, your personal strengths. You know, a lot of times we like find a role or we go down a path or a career and, uh, and really finding like, why am I doing this thing? And I remember talking with you and you, and you mentioned, you know, being in the financial industry yeah. and whatnot. I remember talking to you and, um, and you put together events, uh, with the, uh, entrepreneurial and professional yeah. group. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and you were telling me at one of the things how you are a person that's like a igniter or bringer, bringer yeah. together of people and social yeah. events. And you're, you're doing this, this financial thing. That's kind of the antithesis of who you are. Yeah. You know, talk about that. A little bit. Yeah, so I remember taking a strengths finder test, and um, this was when I was still still at Chase and Connector and Harmony and something else, a few other qualities that are just like I want everyone to come together and get along. And so, not always translates the best for sales, but it's still like I I trying to find common ground and understanding people's needs and asking the right questions. And then it's almost like so obvious that what I have makes sense for you. It's harmony. Right. right? Yeah. That yep. it just like, it just makes sense. Like, let's just do this. Whereas I'm not necessarily probably could be a little bit more, um, not aggressive, but maybe just more assertive with that process. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's worked, you know, I mean, it's worked well throughout my year in financial services and then now even still. So yeah, it's funny, like the, the connector thing, I think I always, you know, we'll have, um, we'll have a few people over, you know, we're, we're planning on having a few people over and I'm like, Oh, you know, we should really invite this couple. And then we should really invite this couple. And this, and then Jen's like, that's 25 people. I'm like, I know, but it just makes it more fun. We just need more people in the house. Whereas she's like, let's just have four. <laughs> and she's like, this, like, this, like, she's such an opposite, like, opposite person. Like, she'll go to the event and she'll like be there for a half hour and want to leave. She's like, it's too peoply here. <laughs> too peoply. <laughs> but it's like the, we talked about this too. Like with an introvert, you know, it's like they have five gold coins that they that they have to very selectively pass out every yep. day. Yep. 
extroverts start with zero gold, gold, gold <laughs> coins and then they have to go like with with interactions they earn them they earn. right so like a, after an event like that we've talked about this too like after one of those events or like after like a, a serious net thing i'll be like just through through the roof like on fire yes. you know or even after like some some going on estimates and just any kind of a good interaction that's good conversation heartwarming yep. whatever it might be i'm just like on fire yep. whereas she's just like <laughs> <laughs> i i love the gold coin uh um analogy yeah. because i think people often get what a uh introverted and extroverted people like they get it wrong they mm -hmm. think that if i like people or whatever if i'm social then i must be extroverted yeah. and there are definitely introverted social people it's not right. that the introverted people are awkward it means exactly what you're talking about that you expel energy in mm -hmm. order to be around people yeah. when i'm around people at an event if i go to a serious net breakfast for example and it's like drinking from the fire hose of all the most incredible people i leave that and i'm on fire yeah. like right or if i do a speaking event i literally have like a like a endorphin high yeah. that like it, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's an incredible process. You know, I love it. And I love doing speaking events because of that, because mm -hmm. I know it's going to be a whole thing throughout my whole entire day. Yeah. You know, introverted people, if they were speaking, they could do it. It, you know, some of them, some of them are the introverted people you think about that are just very awkward with people. Mm -hmm. They're extroverted people that are very awkward with people. It doesn't mean they're just more energized to be around people. Yeah. And I think too, there's, there's different you're not just either extrovert or introvert. I think there's there's definitely a gradient to it because mm -hmm. I'm not the most extroverted or loudest person, but I can I'm conversational and if like I see someone I don't know, I'm willing to be the person to be like walk up to walk them up. and introduce myself. Yep. Whereas like there's no way Jen would ever do that because it's just well, what am I going to say? I don't know. Just go talk to them. Yeah. Like who knows? <laughs> that's really the that's the part you, of the excitement. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> that's the part of the excitement to me. Like I don't know this person. I don't know their story. Right. Like all that stuff. Whereas you're probably a few levels up on the extrovert level, at least for me, maybe just yeah. because of the way you you kind of draw people's attention and also the level <laughs> of your voice. <laughs> you knew I was waiting for you, you to knew say I was going there. <laughs> <laughs> this is just the way that I talk. <laughs> um, but, but even still, like you just, I think like with any kind of events, like it's just, you, you kind of adapt to it. And, and the other, there are plenty of times where I'm like, I'm at a networking thing and I'm like, okay, I'm kind of done. You know, yeah, like I'm not sure. always like yep. on and yep. like, oh, this is, this is my jam. Like sometimes I'm just like, Neh. sometimes it takes a lot for me to go there. Like yeah. I will be like the whole time beforehand, like, uh, I gotta go do this thing, mm -hmm. you know? And then I'll get there. Like I'll tell my wife beforehand, who's also, she's, she's in sales extra, you know, I would say she's introverted because she, it takes her energy to go and spell yeah. to be around people. Yeah. And so, um, I'll be like, uh, you know, I don't really want to go to this thing. I'll be there for an hour. She like gives me the sideways look knowing I'm full of shit, right? Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, I know you when you get into a spot and you see people, you know, you're not going to leave. You're going to be yeah. there for three hours. And then it's yeah. funny because like, I'll be there for three hours and she'll be like, what happened? Yeah. <laughs> like I, <laughs> you knew I was going to yeah. be there. You just get warmed uh, up. It warmed up. That, that last event that you threw, I had told people I was leaving for up to an hour. Mm -hmm. And then you we, were like one of the last ones there. Right? I, I was I, thought, I was so proud of myself, Clark. I told Gracie, I'm like, I'm, I'm out the door now. And then I was I, all the way out, like people stopped me and then it accumulated with you and it was ended up being, being me and you ended up closing the place down. <laughs> and I was there for a full hour over when yeah. I said I was going to be there, you yeah. know, like it just, it just happens. But then I laughed and I was like, I want to tell her all about it. Like mm -hmm. all the incredible conversations I had and like all this stuff happened, you know, yeah. I don't know. It's uh, I'm, I'm an, I'm an, I love entertaining though. Yeah. If you did, I didn't notice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I agree. I love him. I, I agree. I, I think I am too. Like just having people over or, or entertaining, like um, I enjoy it. I'd rather be at my house with people over here, you know, even with the extra work involved, you know, just whether, whether it's a football game or whatever. Um, so yeah, probably that, that's that connector. Right? Yeah, for sure. It's a, yeah. Yeah. But then like it's and we've talked about this is again um there's there are a few commonalities there's like four commonalities between all of my guests one of them being is that uh pe the the people on realize that people are our greatest resources and we've talked about it constantly here like you went out and you started a business that you had no idea anything about it and you went and found a person mm -hmm. you went and found a person that then led you into that business yeah. really yeah yeah and it, it just is continuing to be like i said like 
continuing to add one more piece and one more piece and one more piece until the bus is full, so to speak, you know. And so finding the right coach to to follow that path and then adding more pieces. And eventually it's, like I said, it, maybe it's an admin that's that's the next role and then it's probably two or three more installers for a second truck. And then it's probably like a manager of the two trucks, maybe third truck, you know, production manager as it's called. And then um, probably a salesperson to relieve me from that. And then you kind of just continue to scale yourself up in that dollar per hour sense, right? Because the tech, like I said, you know, is maybe yeah. anywhere from 15, 20 bucks an hour, depending on the, on the, 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 uh, the role or the, the, the company. And then you just continue to scale yourself up. So the sales role is a little bit higher than that, just based on the revenue that they can potentially bring in. The admin is, let's say 25 bucks an hour, give or take. And then you're just continuing to scale. And it's like, then you get to the point where you're just running the company and then not, now you're the manager of the managers, you know, and you're meeting with them and it's a hundred dollar an hour task and yeah. everything under that is assigned or put in a position on someone who's really good at what that task entails, right? Bookkeeping or organizing the schedule and all the installs and all the inventory levels and all of that stuff, maintenance on the trucks and all the other stuff that is not my, like I'll do it, but it's just not my strength. And it's probably your experience owning other businesses and your experience in life. Maybe you can even answer that question. Um, you're going into this completely opposite than most visionaries or most people that start a business are going at most, you know, I'm, I'm working with so many visionaries that are now trying to let go. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's so hard because they've been doing all the things and, and then they're like, how do I remove myself? I've been doing all the things. And it's like, I don't trust that person to go do all these things. You came into this with the full knowledge that I'm never, I'm not going to do all these things for a long period of time. Yeah. I think, I think maybe I'm inherently lazy. <laughs> I just don't want to do it. That's a skill. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, Jen, I'm going to like hire this person to do this and hire this person to do that. She's like, okay. Are you going to pay for it? You know? And I'm like, I'm quick to, quick to offload. Yep. Um, like so there's not, you're just setting your goals. I've got yeah. to, I've got to figure out how to pay for these things. Right. And so there's, you know, I knew from day one, like, I mean, there are guys in this training program that I'm a part of that they've been on the truck as it's called, right. It, it, for seven, eight years. And then finally, like that's a monumental uh, occasion. Like I mentioned for that person, the owner operator to get off the truck. Right. Cause then they can pick their head up and steer the ship. Whereas for me, I was, it was like six weeks. I knew from day one, like I'm, I'm not getting in this business to wash houses. I'm not getting in this business to hang lights. I'm scaling a company to seven figures plus. And who do I need to do that? Um, so I was fortunate. I, I jumped into both of these training programs before I even started. The second one was like, okay, you should be here, you know, at this revenue level, you should be probably at this level of employees. And I was like, I'm not there, but I will be like, I see it in my head. I know where I'm going. I'm a little ahead of the game in terms of where I think I'm at, you know, with the structure of the company, but, um, I'd rather be the smallest guy in the room, right? The whole Henry Ford Absolutely. thing and surround myself with guys that are already in the seven figures and then rubbing elbows with them and then learn from them, you know, not just the, the lead coach, but all the other 50 you guys become, in this program. You come, become who you surround yourself around. Yeah. And it makes sense because you're going to learn, you're going to have a different, you're going to have start to hear their perspective and learn from mm -hmm. their perspective versus somebody that's never done it before. Yeah. Yeah. So I know, yeah, like there's, so the next thing would be like a call service to, to, to basically just field all the calls that are coming in. I mean, fortunately right now there's a, a decent amount coming in every day and I'll be honest, some of them I don't want to answer because I don't know what's on the other end of it. Yeah. Right. And that's, and that's probably just a bad connotation that I took from the banking world because you don't know what's on the other end of that phone. And it'll, you know, maybe not the best thing to admit, but it's like, don't always necessarily want to answer. Cause it's like, could be a problem waiting for you. could be a new customer. So I should really pick up the phone or if I don't want to do it. I should be willing to pay for a service to do it for me. Yeah. And that's kind of where I'm at now. It's like, okay, they can sift through because it's that. either, you know, 40% of them are like, hi, would you like help with your social media? I'm like, no, thank you. You know, or like whatever it is, yeah, right? Yeah. I get them too. Then the other thirty, or 40, <laughs> yeah, the yeah, other yeah. thirty or forty might be like real good phone calls that I should pick up, um, but I, you know, probably half the time I get to them. And so, figuring out that system, removing myself from the system because I'm obviously 
the bottleneck. The bottleneck it's not yeah. working the way it should. Yep. So I'm obviously the problem. Yeah. So should it be, you know, so many dollars per minute of what I'm paying this company to field the calls, go through the script, follow the prompts, and then email me the result? Like it's money well spent, right? So that's probably like the next, the next thing. So it's kind of like, like I mentioned, like continuing to upscale and then like figure out how am I standing in the way? Where am I standing in the way? Like I'm not the best at sales, but I'll do it. I've done it long enough. Yeah. Like I said, I'm not probably as aggressive or as assumptive as I should be, but I'm good enough at it. I think there's a layer of people like seeing the owner show up at an estimate. So there's yep. that, that, yeah. that is in my favor, but eventually I'll, I'll outsource that. Yep. You know, one well, is great. It's kind of like that next step up the, up the, up the rung yeah. is bring on people that will take the early part of the process. Those mm-hmm. early calls sift through them and then give you the qualified lead. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it just, there's too many calls now. It's like, I either pick it up and it's just the, the old, like the old AOL, <laughs> uh, you know, the internet sound. Yeah. I'm like, what is this? Are they sending me a fax? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what's going on why are they sending me a fax so, do people still own that no they do it's uh it's pretty crazy that yeah. faxes still exist in, in yeah. 2023 i don't get it i know like morse code <laughs> <laughs> clark this has been a phenomenal episode yeah i appreciate you coming good. down and sharing yeah, your story you. your journey yeah it's been fun man it's cool and i hope i don't know i mean I, for me it's like hearing a uh, perspective from other business owners that, you know, it's not always easy, but it's so worth it. Like I, I left the bank making a very comfortable six figure, you know, cush position. Right. Yeah. I mean, it was relatively straightforward, easy, not a whole lot of, I mean, it's commission, but still there was some predictability to it. Um, and there wasn't enough to keep me there. Right. Took it initially for the, for the money and then found out pretty quickly that it was not the right fit. And so a buddy of mine who works at a different bank now, when I left, he's like, you found a hole in the fence, keep going. You know, it's like the joke of like, you got out, right? Yes. But the point is like, I would never trade it. I would never like, so that's what Jen and I say. Like if it, if it goes sideways, if something doesn't work, if we get zero customers, we'll just figure something else out. Like going back to that traditional, at least for me, it was like, it's just not an option we'll figure something else out. Like that's as a business owner, like you basically are just how effective are you at solving problems is, is how, you know, and then the bigger, the bigger problems you solve, the more money you make effectively. That's it. Um, It's another commonality, by the way, problem solving. Right. Everyone, my guess has figured out how to solve a problem. Correct. And then, and then continue to solve, you know, the big, the big problem, which is their, which is their, their value add. Right. They're the, the, the gap that they fill. Right. For me, it's putting up lights yep. for people who don't want to get on the ladder in 20 degree weather. Um, but the even smaller, there's micro problem solving within that. Right. Somebody quits or piece of equipment isn't working or whatever it might be. Right. Trying to meet payroll. Like I mentioned, yep. um, constantly figuring that stuff out. It's just new challenges. Yeah. But again, it's, you get you get the honor to do that. You get the honor to solve those problems instead of, oh, I have to do it. you know. So I've been asking every guest recently because this is a recent book that I've read. Have you read The Alchemist? I have. It's one of my favorite. I've read uh, it probably five times. Love it. You're the first person that said yes. It's like phenomenal. I love this. I, it's every entrepreneur should read this book. Yeah, I absolutely love it. I've read it and listened to it. Yeah, it's wonderful. I'm gonna I'm gonna read it again. That's awesome. Now I just, just, I just bought me. the Pilgrimage uh, Saturday, so I'm certain to certain to read that. Is that's that a, also by Paulo? Yeah, yeah I, that's the only one of his I've read. Paulo Coelho, which yeah. is an awesome freaking name. <laughs> 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 I'm like, I had to Google it to see how it was pronounced. Yeah. Now I can't stop saying it. Paulo yeah. Coelho. Yeah. Uh, the, the audio is really. I don't know if you've read it. Or I have not audio. listened to the audio. Yeah, the audio is yeah. great because the 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 narrator does a great job with the different characters and you know I'm follow, I'm following your personal next. legend and the, you know all that stuff. It's just so good. It's, you know, at the back of the book is, and I, I butcher quotes, but it's like our one true destiny, our one true uh, reason for life is to find out our reason for life, right? Yeah. It's, and along the way, you know, we're going to have our pitfalls, we're going to learn our lessons. Mm-hmm. Do we learn from them or do we get stuck by them? Right. Do we say, we could, I could never do this. I've never done anything like this before. You know, I don't know how to do this and yeah. just have that regret resentment and, you, and you've already lost before you've even begun yep. at that point right 
And that's what you were talking about at the beginning. Like you only lose when you don't go out and try. Right. Yeah, because if, if you truly give up instead of just learning from that failure and continuing on, if you truly cash the chips in and say, I'm done, that's failure. Yep. Right. But otherwise you're just sharpening the saw and figuring it out. And I would imagine failed businesses and the things that you've had have led to you being able to do what you're doing now. Yeah. Yeah. There's plenty of, there's plenty of learning that we, that, that has come through what my experiences are, right? Like the first one we did was, it was a franchise for vending machines learned quickly that we don't want to do franchise again. Right. And, <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. and also that revenue model, like it wasn't quite as, um, it wasn't big enough, if that makes sense. Like margins were tight, you know, and it's just like, you, you really need to scale. Um, you know, it's like you're, you're, you're kind of tripping over pennies, you know what I mean? Just to try and make it work. And, um, and then the other one was, was kind of an offshoot for me for in financial services and, um, realized that online business and, and doing my own thing for, for coaching and, and financial coaching was just not, uh, not a good fit. You know, it wasn't really what I wanted to do. I had gotten tired of it, gotten burned out from the whole industry. Um, and so, yeah, there's, there's, Again, there's little lessons within both of those. It's proof that, that money's in everything away. to you. Yeah. Money, you should be happy, right? And yeah. I'm sure there are people in your life that are like, why are you upset? <laughs> you know, <Yeah. laughs> I'll take that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's funny. I tell people the story like well, about walking away from, from that position that I had. And, and like, that's a job most would kill for. Like yeah. I, I was super fortunate to have that for the, you know, three years that I was in that particular role. I mean, it was a chase for longer, but most people, when I tell them, they're like, seriously, like, you walked away from like, it, it didn't matter. Yeah. It just, it didn't matter anymore. And, and fortunately, like we were in a position, Chen's business had done well enough. I could, le- we could lean on that. Um, while I kind of figured the rest out. Yeah. It was pretty cool. I realized that we cannot make it through this whole hour episode and not talk about Griswold's holiday lighting. <laughs> We've not talked about the name once. I don't know if anybody's put this together yeah. while watching that his name is Clark. <laughs> <laughs> so like, so last summer before, like Jen was helping me with the, with the, you know, the, the registration and the, and the URL and stuff, go daddy and all that stuff. She's like, you know, it needs to be Griswold's right. <laughs> and I'm like, Oh, I know. I'm like, is that kind of corny though? Like, are people going to dig that? Like, is it too much? She's like, no, I think people are really going like it and <laughs> and it's been very positive a very and, and more than half the time people are like wait seriously your name's clark <laughs> you know and i'm like yeah it is like that's why the name is the name as long as they're over like 30 right yeah because kids like most of my guys that work with me they're like wait i don't get it like i just thought that was your name because <laughs> they haven't seen the movie so it should be like okay part of the interview now is like before our in-person interview you need to watch this movie. If you come in <laughs> and you don't know the movie, yeah. you're not getting the job. Yes. <laughs> if you don't come in and see that shirt and be like, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why I'm here. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. It's fun. And my son Owen still thinks. So I, I, I pay him, uh, what is it, five or ten cents to help me put bul- the bulbs in the sockets. You know, so like <laughs> all last winter, he was helping me with that. This is so funny. I'm, I'm in the car with, with him and a buddy of his. And I was like, hey, uh, Aiden, what's your dad do again? He's like, oh, he's an engineer. And then Owen's like, my dad's a Christmas light bulber. And I'm like, <laughs> I just left it. Christmas I didn't light even, bulber. I didn't even explain, like, yep, I just put lights in the sockets, and that's my job. <laughs> it was so perfect. Love it. Uh, yeah. I love what kids say. And I'm like, just leave it alone, you know? And I try, to, like, of course, like, you probably do the same thing with your son. Like, you try to, it's hard to teach these lessons and show them, like, Cause for us, like for Jen and I both, like we value what you learn through entrepreneurship. Yeah. Like what I thought when I was leaving high school and then going to college is very <laughs> different now yep. than what, than what I thought of the value of an undergrad or a master's degree and so on. And so we're kind of just letting them, like, I don't know. I don't really, and I, mean, I think we've talked about this too. Like, I don't know if college makes sense. I don't know if that's the right path for, unless they need a professional degree yeah. or a yep. doctor, lawyer certification type thing. I don't know. I mean, kind of let them figure it out. What I love is, um, is they're watching. You know, I've, I've had so many conversations with people, whether they've been on this show or just entrepreneurs and, you know, out, out in the wild, <laughs> so to speak, mm-hmm. that they've, they're doing what they're doing because they watch their parents do it. Yeah. They think like entrepreneurs because their parents were entrepreneurs and their parents might have not have 
had successful businesses even, but they were doing their thing. I've heard so many people that were, their parents were in network marketing and they did just different things and yeah. it made them, it, it came down to the kids where they were able to think freer and they, yeah. they, they were able to solve problems at a different yeah. level. Yeah. I forget who it was. Somebody I heard, oh, I think it was Dave Ramsey. He said, um, all these kids were saving for cars. And he said, if you go and you work at a fast food place and you want to save for a car, let's say they were 14, saving up, I'll match you one-to-one. If you go and start a business and solve a problem, I'll match you three to one. So they were all encouraged to start a lot of business or great. whatever, right? And, and go and go create something out of nothing, essentially. And then their five grand becomes 20 because they got matched, right? Because he values. And it's again, it's hard to instill it. Like, I think they just absorb it yeah. through seeing it as opposed to us trying to like, okay, sit down. Let me teach you what it means. <laughs> you know, like, it's hard to just, you can't. I forget the phrase, but it's like they see by, they learn by seeing as opposed to by being told. Yep. Right? Yep. And so that's kind of our hope is to instill the, some of those qualities, you know, just by osmosis, I suppose, you know. So just last thing before we wrap it up and, and staying on with the branding. I yeah. know that, you know, you, you had the exterior cleaning service. Yeah. You had Griswold's holiday lighting and, um, and it's recently come under one one branding, right? Yeah, it was. We had a lot of duplication, so um, it's going to be combined to just Griswold's exterior services, and then kind of a sub category of holiday lighting and exterior cleaning. It'll still be under all under Griswold's. I think that it's just a catchier name than Elite Exterior Cleaning is. You know what it is, but it's not like not quite as catchy, you know? Yeah. Um, and it's easier just to have it all under Griswold's, and then I have you know, a lot of doubling up that I'm paying for right now, like with my CRM and some insurance stuff that I can combine, which will be helpful to, you super know, nice. yeah. save some money, tax returns, bookkeeping, all that stuff. Um, we'll make it simpler. That's again, nice. again, another, another encouraging thing from my, another, um, something that my business coach talked about. He's like, yeah, I used to have two companies and he's like, just believe me, it makes sense. Just simplify it. One, everything. And then um, initially I thought I was like, okay, I'm going to have two in the event that maybe I sell one in the future and keep one. But the likelihood of me selling one and not the other is very small. Um, Maybe never sell them, but you never know. Yeah. So yeah, just simplify. That's, that's cool. That's a good lesson. Yeah. And Clark, this has been awesome. Thank you so much again for coming in and sharing everything, sharing your story. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Yeah.